Hi everyone, it's Erin from the Provincial Farmhouse. In today's video, I'm going to be creating an ornate artwork using IOD moulds and decoupage paper. For my project today, I'm going to be working on this 40 centimeter diameter wood blank that I got from a craft website. It also has a round frame around the outside. I'm going to be working with IOD's Classic Elements Mold and the Dainty Flourishes Mold. I'm also going to be using a fast cast resin, so I'm pouring out equal parts A and B into separate containers, equal measurements, and then I'm going to combine the two and stir them for about 30 seconds. Once I'm finished stirring the mixture really well, I'm going to then pour it out into my castings. You want to work pretty quickly with resins like these. You've got about a two minute work time and then it will take about 10 to 15 minutes for this resin to set. When my castings are ready, I'm going to pull them out of the molds. I did set these to the side for a little while so they will harden up, but you can also make them more pliable again by using a hairdryer. So this is what they look like. I'm going to put the classic elements design up the top and the two scrolls from the Dainty Flourishes mold either side. And as I said, I did set these off to the side so they did harden up quite a bit. So I'm just using a heat gun to heat them up and that way I can bend it and manipulate it. I'm adding some Gorilla super glue to the back of it and because I've heated the casting up I'm able to bend it and get it looking exactly the way I want and I'm also able to get a really good flush contact to my surface. Once I'm happy with how that's positioned I'll hold it in place for about 10 seconds and then I'm going to move on to the scroll design so I'm adding that same super glue but I'm also going to be using some hot glue on the back to hold it straight away. I actually pulled it back off the surface. You can see that glue residue because it just wasn't sticking as quickly as I would like. And I really want to position it so that the scroll detail is hanging over the edges. So I'm going to repeat the same process for the other scroll that's going to go on the other side. I used resin for these particular pieces because they're going to be hanging off the edge of the wood blank a little bit and I need the strength that the resin provides as opposed to clay which may crumble and break off. Next I'm going to be using IOD's new Viridus mold and I'm going to first dust the designs that I want to use with cornstarch. This is going to help my clay release. As I said before I used the resin on the pieces that are going to hang off the edge. I'm using clay for these pieces because they're going to be supported by the back of the wood blank so there's no worry there with any cracking or breaking off. So I'm really working that clay into my hands rolling it up and now I'm going to press it down into the molds. I'm just grabbing excess off from one end and putting it in the other and you can see I'm using my thumbs and my fingers to really push out that excess clay and the micro rim around the edges is really helping me get a nice clean edge. I flexed my mold, flipped it over and then I'm able to pretty easily get my casting out. I'm going to position it on the wood blank where I want it to go and then I'm going to cast the other design which has leaves facing in the opposite direction. It's almost a mirror image of that design. I'm going to be casting two of this design and two of the previous ones to go around my blank and I'm just going to be repeating it. We're almost creating like a wreath style design. So you can see I've created two of those. I will create another one of each of them and now I'm going to be moving on to some of these smaller leaf designs. I'm dusting those with cornstarch and I'm going to work my dust air dry clay into those as well. So the thing I really like about this mold is there are all shapes and sizes of leaves so it really is perfect for creating a wreath or a laurel style design. So at this point I'm just going to continue to cast various types of leaves to add to the outside section of my wood blank and I just kept going until I was happy with the shape and you can also pull these apart and use them as individual pieces and I also really liked using some of the smaller leaf designs as well that variation in size really does help you get a nice balanced design so I'm just having a bit of a play with how it all looks and I also do a couple of partial castings as well so always remember that you can use bits and pieces of the mold you don't have to use them as is. These particular ones I thought would look good down the bottom and I'm just sort of tucking it under the castings that I've already done. 
none of my castings are glued down just yet. I don't ever glue everything down until I'm happy with the composition because that way I can move bits and pieces around until I'm happy with how it looks. For the top section, I cast a couple of these smaller leaf designs and then I grabbed IOD's Swag Mold. I'm going to be casting some of the berry design from that mold. I thought that this would work perfectly. They actually reminded me a little bit of mulberries or blackberries. So I thought this would tie in really well with the Veritas Mold. So I'm gonna cast a few of those and then there is also a, another berry style design mold on that particular mold. So I'm just casting that now down the bottom. And again, I thought that variation, it's still got some berries, but it would just add some more interest. So I'm going to continue to cast a variety of those. And then once I'm happy with how that's looking, I dusted the stick or branch designs that's in that mold with cornstarch. And now I'm going to start working my clay into those pieces. I'm going to be casting a few of these. There are obviously two different branch designs in this mold. And I'm going to actually be positioning these around the inside section of my frame. So ultimately I'm creating a sort of ornate frame to go around the outside with the artwork in the center. So this is going to help frame that out. So I'm going to make quite a few of these. And once I'm happy with all of that, I can start gluing things down. So I'm moving the castings off my backboard there and now I'm going to start gluing down the branch sections first because I want to lay the leaf designs over the top. As I'm gluing the different castings down I'm also bending the leaves around the sides, I'm gluing the berries down, in some sections I'm lifting leaves up to tuck others underneath and this will just be something that you'll do to your liking and to however you want your design to look. I just went around and anywhere that I felt that one leaf should be tucked under the other I did that. There's not really a right or wrong way to do this. I'm using my Sealy's Quick Set Wood Glue. It's definitely something that I would recommend when you're working with clay. So I'm just going to continue to work my way around the frame section, gluing down all of the castings. I'm of course using clay today. I find it easier to layer with clay. I like to do partial castings, but if you're not very confident with clay, this is definitely something you could do by doing multiple pours with resin. Once I got to the top section, I rethought the idea of having all of those different bits and pieces there. I glued down part of that wooden trim underneath and then I thought about just popping a few leaves here and there. But in the end, I arranged the leaves so that they were sort of falling over the edges. And then I did grab one of the little berry castings and I just curved that over the center. I felt in this case that less was more and I didn't want to crowd the top. Next, I'm going to be using Paint Couture's Pitch Black Chalk Paint. I have a soft chip brush and I'm going to work my way around the frame and I'm going to paint each and every one of those molds and the outside frame section. I'm being gentle here. My castings have been drying for several hours, but I don't want to damage them. So I'm just being really gentle. The bristles of my brush are quite soft as I said so they're not going to do any damage to the details so I'm just going to continue to work my way around that frame until I have the entire piece covered. I chose pitch black for two reasons. One is that it's highly pigmented so it's only going to take one coat and two I'm going to be putting a metallic over the top because I want this to look like an old weathered gilded frame so I feel like this is really going to help create that look. The next day I came in with Paint Couture's Bronze Lux Metallic and I'm going to go around and again I'm using a chip brush with very soft bristles and I'm just dabbing that beautiful metallic on. It's only going to take one coat to get the coverage that I want. I still want to be able to see some of that black peeking through here and there because as I said I want this to look like a 
weathered old gilded frame and often when you see the gilding has been worn away you have that darker tone underneath so I'm just going to continue to work my way around adding this beautiful metallic to the entire outside this bronze metallic is definitely my favorite color to use, but you could come in with Paint Couture's Antique Gold or Gold Mine or Copper. Just depends what look you're after. Now, something else I wanted to mention is I only just today on this project finished using that bronze and I've had that open since September last year. So these metallics go a really long way. I've only just opened up a new bronze Lux metallic. And if you've been watching me for a while, you'll know that I use this color a lot. I also use it in my workshop. So it has gone a really long way. I'm definitely impressed with the amount of projects I've been able to do with this one container. I let that dry overnight and the next day I came in with Paint Couture's Farmhouse Linen Chalk Paint. I'm using my size 14 Eco Brush. It has a lovely tapered edge and because I have to get in really close around the rounded inside border, this brush worked perfectly for that particular job. I did go in a little bit closer here so that you can see how well those bristles do cutting a fine line around the edge. So I'm going to be doing two coats in the center. So this is really going to tidy up that edge and this is going to be a great base for the following step, which is adding decoupage. And whenever you're doing decoupage, it is a good idea to have a lighter color underneath so that the colors of your decoupage paper can really show to their best advantage. Once my two coats of chalk paint were dry, I took out Would You Ben's Posh Chalk Decoupage Paper Rustic Roses. This is an older design and I'm going to be using this as my artwork for the center. I'm going to press that paper into the inside section of my wood blank there and I'm just using my fingernails to crease a line so that I know how much to cut off. So I'm just really working it in there, making sure I've got it positioned exactly the way that I want, creasing it well and then I'm going to take it out and I'm going to be using some scissors to trim along the crease line that I created. If I've inspired you to try any of the Paint Couture products used in today's video, I would really appreciate it if you would use my affiliate link. I will put it in the description and on the screen. I just get a little thank you from Paint Couture in return. Next, I'm going to tear off the white borders up the top and down the bottom. I want to be able to add in some more of the paper, the scraps that we cut off to try and blend that design to make it look like the artwork fills the entire center. And having these white pieces along the edge is going to really detract from that. So I'm going to tear it. I'm tearing it also because it is easier to blend two pieces of decoupage paper together when you have an uneven torn line. So once I have done that, I'm going to work out how much of the scrap sections that I'm going to need to trim off and add down the bottom. And again, I am going to be doing some tearing. I decided to tear around some of the leaf designs from this particular section. This is going to go down the bottom. So it will almost look like there's some other flowers peeking up from that section. Once I'm happy with the bottom section, I'm going to crease the scrap paper for the top section, cut that out and work out how much excess I'm going to need to tear off. To attach my decoupage paper, I'm going to be using Paint Couture's Decoupage Medium in matte. I'm going to work in sections. I'm going to put some product down on half of my surface. I am being generous. I don't want to have any sections that don't have enough because that's when you run the risk of getting air bubbles. So I'm putting a generous coat on half of that area and then I'm going to put my paper down and smooth it out gently with my fingers. This is rice paper, so it is a little bit thicker than your traditional tissue paper so I'm able to do that with my hands. If you're worried about any friction or tearing you can use a ball of cling wrap. I'm then going to lift up the other side of the paper and I'm going to repeat that same process applying a generous coat of the product 
in that other half and then once I'm happy with that I will press the rest of the paper down with my fingers first and then once I'm happy with that I will come in with another coat of that decoupage medium over the top. I'm going to add that decoupage medium up the top and down the bottom where we're going to be adding that extra paper to sort of blend the two sections, sort of make it look more seamless. So up the top and down the bottom, I've added product underneath, I'm pressing the paper down and then I'm going to add another coat over the top of the paper that we've just stuck down. I wasn't completely happy with one of the sections down the bottom so I did lift that up a little bit and reposition it. I tore a little bit more of the paper from the back out because it was making the little rose image a little bit darker. So here you can see I'm just tearing a little bit out so that that rose colour isn't impacted by that dark design. Ultimately, I wasn't too worried about the differences in colour or seeing a faint line. My thoughts were that perhaps this was an old canvas that was a little bit imperfect, maybe a little bit damaged over time. And here's our finished ornate artwork. I love how this turned out. The IOD molds are perfect for creating an ornate frame. The paint control products make it look like an old gilded piece. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. If you enjoyed today's video, I would really appreciate it if you would hit that like button, comment and share it out. If you haven't already, I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of our videos. You can find most of the products used today on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. Thanks for watching.